Our founder, Liz Brenna, couldn't be here tonight. She was very disappointed, but she is out in Colorado, fighting off the floods, actually, in Boulder. Um, she is at the B Corp retreat. And so Dave kind of gave you a little teaser into B Corp certification. Socially Good Business is also a proud certified B Corp. I know he uh, wanted you to look it up, but I'll fill you in a little if you're not familiar with B Corp certification. It's a certification similar to USDA Organic, Fair Trade, LEED, as Ellie mentioned. However, rather than certifying products or buildings, B Corp certification certifies businesses. And it certifies a business's commitment to an equally weighted social, economic, and environmental mission. So Liz was very excited to be there, but again, disappointed that she couldn't be here with us tonight. Before I really dive into what we do at Socially Good Business, I want to back up a little and tell you about how we came to be. So Liz got her start at the Ben & Jerry's headquarters. And for those of you that aren't aware, Ben & Jerry's was one of the first true social enterprises. So long before B Corp certification existed, long before consumers were demanding that companies really practice or preach, practice and preach a social and environmental mission, Ben & Jerry's decided to integrate that social and environmental mission into the core of their business. And what is perhaps more remarkable about this is that in doing so, they became very successful. So while Liz was at Ben & Jerry's, she had numerous companies coming to her and asking, how can we do this? We want to emulate these business practices, but we don't know where to start. So she did a little bit of research and realized that there weren't very many resources out there for companies that were interested in bettering their social and environmental impact. So it took a lot of courage, but she moved back to her hometown of Rochester, New York, and she started Socially Good Business. Now you're probably wondering, what do we actually do? Well, we're an external or boutique seed agency and that's SEED, S-E-I-D, which is an acronym for Societal and Environmental Integrity Development. You'll probably hear us also shorten it to S-E-I, Societal and Environmental Integrity. And we have coined this phrase and we use it in place of terms like Corporate Social Responsibility, CSR, or Sustainability. To be quite honest, we um, we ended up coining this term because we got sick of using CSR to refer to a brand's social impact and sustainability to refer to their environmental impact and wanted one all-encompassing term. So again, we are a boutique seed agency. And what this means is that we help other companies with their social and environmental initiatives. So we essentially add bandwidth to their internal resources and we don't just help them strategize, but we also get right in the trenches with them. And so we help them with the implementation process and strive to essentially become an extension of their company. Um, and in doing all of this, we preach one, one main philosophy, and that philosophy is consistency. Because what we have found is that in order for a brand to really develop a strong SEI strategy, they need to integrate it into the foundation of their company. So I'm actually going to pass the mic over to Kate now. She's going to further explain this um, philosophy of consistency. And I think also get into why doing business this way isn't just good for the planet or for the society, but also for your bottom line. Hi everybody, I'm Kate Crane. Uh, like I mentioned in the intro, I am a Director of Research at Socially Good Business. And thank you, Meg, that was a marvelous introduction. It was really awesome. Um, so we, SGB tends to work with larger national brands, um, but I hope that everything I say is helpful with your smaller businesses and your own sustainability plans, because I think it is definitely scalable. Um, so I just wanted to pick up where Meg left off and talk more about consistency and what that means for us and why that's very important when you're starting your own uh, sustainability strategies. And I don't even think I'll go into the ROI because Dave so um, thoroughly expounded upon that and uh, I think we'll have a pretty good idea of the ROI. But um, consistency for us is, for one thing, starting on the inside and working your way out. Um, 
So this is sort of focusing on the innards of your business, your employees, your responsible sourcing before you turn that into a, a PR campaign. The other way around doesn't work and it usually just wastes money. <laughs> um, another thing with consistency is that when you are deciding on your strategy, you should align your programs with your core business objectives and make sure that it really matches your, your brand personality and what you find to be important to your brand. And, and then um, perform these projects in a sustained and, and integrated manner. Um, it takes a lot of time. It takes um, stepping back and giving yourself a bird's eye view on your industry and, and your brand within that industry. Um, and actually, it takes more bandwidth. Um, brands should really have these days a, a chief sustainability officer or an external C department um, or, or a team really looking out for these, these kinds of things. Um, so our tool that Meg mentioned, our impact map. Did you mention it? Did you say the name? Impact map. We call our tool as the impact map. And we have this tool to help brands um, reach their consistency goals, their sustainability goals, and becoming um, a societal, environmental, integrity-driven brand. Um, our impact map uh, filters the brand through a handful of categories. And it helps us determine strengths and weaknesses. Um, it helps us determine white space stuff that maybe you've ignored. Um, and actually, maybe the white space is weakening your existing initiatives. And we'll take a look at that. So it's a very holistic way of looking at a brand. Um, because all companies live within its own ecosystem. You know, it takes, it takes from its natural environment. Um, it takes from its community. Um, it takes, it has its own part to play in its communities and its environment. So it should be a give and take. And all of these things should be sort of incorporated into um, deciding and measuring your impact, both positive and negative. Um, so that is, it's actually something that we like to um, broach with our companies. It's kind of a sensitive subject, but uh, we, we call it total, we don't call it this, this is an idea that's out there, total cost accounting. Really taking into account um, the resources that you are using and making that part of your economic cost. Because that's part of what has led us to a lot of the problems we have today. That the cost of natural resources is not embedded in our accounting or our economic practices. Um, and that's a problem. If there is no economic incentive to um, preserve a rainforest, it, it won't be preserved. Um, so that is the impact map in general. It, it um, looks at the brand in its own little space, its own little ecosystem, and we map it out and see, see what um, the strengths and weaknesses are, and then strategize from there. Um, how am I doing that time? Good? Cool. Um, so we strategize, find the, um, the low-hanging fruit, stuff that really um, is easy to do first and match it up with brand mission objectives. And then, as Meg said, we implement. And this impact map is also a benchmarking tool. So it provides the baseline, where you are now, um, where you want to go in the future. Um, it's just a, it's a great thing. <laughs> That's the thing that I've been working on at my time at Socially Good Business.